Hello world, my name is Vincent and today I am going to share with you my 7 year programming journey. I hope that this story can be inspirational and also educational as well. It all began back in 2014. I was highly addicted to this game called League of Legends. My Asian parents would always complain how I eat game all day long. I was that weird kid that would rush home from school just so that I could play this game. Despite the addiction, I still managed to pass my courses. However, I faced a dilemma in 12th grade where I didn't know what career path I wanted to take. Luckily, I have an older sister who attended the University of Waterloo, which is known as one of the top schools in Canada for computer science and engineering. She knew how addicted I was to League of Legends and suggested that I should get into computer science so that I could potentially intern or work full-time at Riot Games. I applied for computer science with co-op and I got accepted, but I didn't make the cutoff for computer science. My 88 average was not high enough and I got deferred to an alternative program called Geomatics. What is Geomatics you ask? Geomatics was basically a program that consisted of a little bit of programming and mostly math and GIS related stuff. In this program, we did some fun stuff like measuring the circumference of a tree, flying a balloon to take aerial shots, and we also learned about the environment. All of this sounds really cool, but my heart was with League of Legends. So I took the risk and went to Waterloo for a program that I knew nothing about. Fast forward to fall 2014. Look at all these people! All these people. During orientation, I met my fellow geomatic classmates. Almost everyone I met applied for computer science, and guess what? We all got deferred to geomatics. It was all fun and games, we all joked about it, but deep down, we knew that we were the rejects of computer science. But there was also hope at the end of the tunnel. The first thing I did after orientation was meet up with an academic advisor, who advised me of how I could transfer into computer science from geomatics. Just a quick note, uh, this was back in 2014, so anything I say now might have changed. These are the courses that I took, and I needed to maintain an 80 average with no fails, get at least a 70 in CS 135, 70 in Math 114, and also an 80 in Math 127. To ensure that I will achieve all this, I had to uninstall League of Legends. CS 135 was where my programming journey began. I learned my first programming language called Scheme in an IDE called Dr. Racket. This was my first programming course and I kid you not, I did not understand anything. Basic concepts like comments and variables did not make any sense at all. I thought about giving up, but I didn't want to waste my tuition money. After all the struggles, I ended up building something really cool. I used recursion to build a backtracking algorithm to solve peg solitaire. At the end of the semester, I got an 80 in Math 127 and 83 in Math 114 and a 69 in CS135. I thought that this was the end of the world for me. I got really desperate at this point and I didn't know what to do. So I reached out to my professor and I emailed him and told him about my situation. And I basically asked him for a plus one so that I could make the 70 cutoff for the transfer. This prof literally saved my career. He gave me the plus one and just told me to enjoy my winter holiday. That was the best Christmas gift I ever got. Thank you so much. 2015. This is the year where I finally became legal. So I finally got to experience clubbing life and I also found out how weird washrooms were in a club. This year, I managed to maintain an average of 75 in order to fulfill the requirements to transfer into computer science. <laughs> However, after all the hard work, I got pretty burnt out. And that's when my marks started to tank. And that's when I discovered that C's get degrees. This year, I learned how to program in C and C++. I learned about pointers and data structures such as linked lists and trees. I also got to work with a partner to build a chamber crawler game in the terminal. There were definitely a lot of bugs in our code, but we ended up getting everything to work in one all-nighter. On top of school, I also applied for my first co-op position. I had no idea how a tech resume should be, and my resume kind of just looked like this. Yup, I didn't really have any relevant experiences. All I did was some barbering on the side. I worked at Medieval Times as a server. I also wore some pretty interesting clothes. Since I had a decent 75 average, I ended up getting a few interviews and I bombed most of them. I have never done a technical interview before. And the only programming language that was still fresh in my mind was C++. If you're doing interviews, please don't make the mistake of doing it in C++. It makes things 10 times harder. Thinking back, I probably could have solved all of those problems if I used Python and some hash tables. In the end, I got pretty lucky and I got a job as a DevOps engineer at Oracle Ilopa in Toronto. I didn't even know what DevOps was, but I knew what Oracle was, so I took the job. In this job, I found out that I didn't fit in. 
I wasn't made for a professional working culture at all. I guess you can say that I love emojis. I tend to end my sentences with smiley faces and XDs and tongue faces. After completing a task at work, I would comment, task complete, and then I would put a smiley face at the end. Within a few minutes, I got an email from my boss. Hey Vincent, may I please ask you again to exhibit utmost professionalism in your communication? I see you put a smiley every time you put a comment. That is not needed. Use your discretion as to when a smile is warranted. Thanks. Rip. Yeah, I guess corporate life isn't for me. All in all, in this position, I learned a lot about DevOps. More specifically, how systems are monitored, how to get access to a remote machine, uh, ACL, and also the LAMP stack, aka PHP. Regardless, I had a lot of fun and I definitely enjoyed the views of the office. 2016. Yo, it's like minus 40 right this year, I learned algorithms and data structures, which basically improved my interview game. I learned how to program in MIPS and I built a mini C compiler. I learned about threads, locks, built a traffic simulator, and also learned about operating systems where I learned hash tables and page tables. This year is also where I let my ego get to my head. I thought that because I worked at Oracle, I was set for my next co-op. In Waterloo, there's this huge buzz about bus. where students would apply to jobs in California in hopes of making it big. So I tried this and it totally backfired. I didn't get any interviews at all. And I felt like It's fine. It's fine. So for the students who did not get a job in the main round, we actually got a second chance in continuous round, which basically consists of jobs that did not get filled in the main round. I got two interviews this term. The first one, I got grilled on my marks, and the second one was pretty much do or die. So my second internship was at Double Play Entertainment, which is a small game studio of mainly three people, the CEO, the CTO, and the artist. This company held the number one ranking in the app store for real money gambling. This job was pretty interesting. Instead of going to an office, I went into a living and working space. I had the opportunity to build a game from scratch for a client. All in all, I had a lot of fun and I also trolled my boss a lot. <laughs> to end off the year, I tried Cali or Bust again for my next co-op. I got an interview for Microsoft for a product manager role. I tried really hard for this position because I really wanted to work in the States. So I threw away my Cracking the Coding interview book and I started reading Cracking the PM interview instead. Unluckily, I got rejected from the position and I was pretty bummed out. But I guess that is for the better because I wanted to become a software engineer and not a product manager. So this semester, I also went back to Continuous Brown. And this time I got an interview with a company in New York, Compass. This company required two phone screens and I passed the first one. I really wanted this job, but I also got a competing offer from another company. In Continuous Round, if a student gets matched with a job, they must take it. If they don't take it, they will be kicked out of the co-op program. However, if they have multiple offers, they can rank them and hopefully get their top choice. I knew that I did not have the time to do a second phone screen. So instead, I reached out to the Compass recruiter and used the rules of continuous round as leverage to negotiate for the Compass offer. And the recruiter was super chill and he gave me the offer. And I was so happy. 2017. USA, baby. This year, I did two co-ops in New York City, Compass, and Yex. Although they weren't jobs in California, New York City was still pretty lit. It was my first time in New York, and I had so much fun exploring. I felt a little bougie, and I tried out a Michelin star restaurant during restaurant week. The food was delicious, and it hurt my pocket a bit. At Compass, I did mobile development, where I got to do a little bit of both iOS and Android, and I definitely learned a lot. More specifically, I learned how to architect apps with MVVM. Compass was also a very small startup with around 50 people in product and engineering. This was awesome because I got to meet everyone in the office. My next co-op was at Yex, where I did front-end development with Vanilla.js. And I also learned that I highly dislike Vanilla.js. Yex was very fun, they had a lot of fun intern events, and I enjoyed every aspect of it. So this year, I took distributed systems and learned about RPCs, load balancers, and also how to architect large systems. In addition, I also took networks where I learned about TCP and UDP. And I also learned about handshakes. Not that one, but this one. 2018. Tell me all the bus. This time I didn't bust. For this co-op season, I applied to Riot Games. However, I did not get an interview because apparently you need an active league match history in order to get an interview. What a bummer. 
So I also interviewed with Microsoft, Facebook, Yelp, and Flexport. I made it to the final round for each of them and I was so close, but for some reason, I blanked out in all of my interviews. Like I, I literally just sat there and stared at the interviewer like, like I didn't know anything. I actually felt so after this. I prepared so hard for these interviews and I just blew it. So I was pretty bummed out for the rest of the semester. And guess what? I went back to continuous round. So it wasn't the end of the world and I did end up getting an internship at IOTEX, a blockchain startup in California. Yay! At IOTEX, I was given the opportunity to build a front-end app from scratch. And we did a lot of grinding, but the grind wasn't that bad because everyone was grinding together, so it was kind of fun. So we basically worked hard and played hard. Working in Cali was a dream come true, but I also felt homesick. There was a three hour difference from Toronto. So for my last co-op, I decided to intern back home in Toronto. I got an offer at this company called Integrate AI. This company specialized in building AI models for third party companies, and they emphasize a lot in data security. I enjoyed this co-op a lot because I got a chance to live at home again and also experience Toronto life. I had the opportunity to meet a client and also build a data pipeline for them. That was actually pretty interesting and I enjoyed it a lot. 2019, my last semester. So for this semester, I took a lot of bird courses just to keep it chill. I also helped plan the math grad ball, which is basically prom but for university students. So I should have applied for full-time jobs, but I got really lazy. It was my last semester, so I wanted to keep it chill and memorable. So instead of doing interviews, I just hit up the recruiter at Compass and asked for a return offer. I started full-time work at Compass in July 2019. The company definitely changed a lot from when I interned. It grew a lot and everything moved super quick. In the end, I was able to lead many meaningful projects. And I also got to shake the CTO's hand and also share a piece of my dinner with him. Things were going great and then the pandemic happened. After one year and a half, I decided it was time for me to leave. As a mobile developer, I wanted to grow my career and work somewhere mobile first. And that's when I landed at my next gig at Lyft. Lessons learned. Interviews are hard and you should always spend time prepping for them. Remember that people we interact with are humans and not robots. You never know until you try. Also, C's get degrees. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my new content. Peace out.